In this video I will show you how to repair or improve the quality of a jumper wire or clip plate. I will be soldering the actual wire to the alligator clip to make a solid and an improved connection. One thing I always recommend my students to do is to take these clip leads or jumper leads and take them apart and solder the wires to the alligator clips. What the manufacturer has done is they've stripped the wire, folded the wire back on the insulation and then crimped it to the alligator clip. The problem with this is, is that sometimes the crimp connection is not done very well and it is loose and then we go resistive and this creates problems while we're using the jumper or clip lead in an electronic circuit. So this is a useful idea for the engineer, technologist, technician and even the home hobbyist. So here's what I'm going to do to solve the problem. This is a close-up view of the crimp connection and what we're going to do is we're going to either pull the wire out of the alligator clip or use a small set of needle nose pliers and open up the crimp. I quickly used a pair of needle nose pliers and I opened up the crimp connection. Here you can see the wire was stripped, folded back on itself and then connected back into the alligator clip. So this is the problem that we're going to resolve and if uh, we leave these leads the way they are, then they do go resistive, eventually causing all kinds of problems in electronic circuits. What I've done is I've twisted the wires. It doesn't much matter if you twist them clockwise or counterclockwise for the vortex effect. It will not affect the speed of electrons if you think it does. I've got some beachfront property under six feet of water for you. So let's keep on moving. Now let's get the stretched out wire back into the alligator clip, crimping the wire at where it was initially crimped, leaving the copper part exposed inside the alligator clip for soldering. I've completed the crimp connection and I'm using a set of helping hands to hold everything while I'm completing the solder connection onto the alligator clip. The helping hands are really quite useful for this task. Let's straighten this out a little wee bit. You can see the helping hands is just holding everything in place while I'm doing this. I'm using the boot from the alligator clip to protect the wire from damage uh, while I'm holding it in the helping hands because I don't want to damage the insulation on the wire. Now let's solder the wire to the alligator clip and Let's zoom in on this. Make sure your soldering iron is touching both the wire and the alligator clip. Depending on how hot your soldering iron is will depend how long this process takes. Make sure the soldering iron tip is touching the alligator clip and the wire. We're going to count to about six and then you can start flowing the solder in. You'll notice the solder will start to wick into the copper wire and if we have it hot enough the solder will bond to the alligator clip. Don't be scared to use a bit of solder. If we did it right this should look like water that has flowed out on a glass table as opposed to dog poop sitting on the sidewalk in big lumps. So make sure that it's all flowed out and if it is flowed out, you've got the right amount of heat. But again, you will have to use a bit of solder to get this job done right. This is what the finished solder connection should look like. It's flowed out and bonded well to the alligator clip and wicked well into the wire. Now we have a good quality clip lead and this should give us no problems doing our...